How's it going guys? Doctor here with another video. I want to talk to you about the 50k in 100 day challenge and the future of it, what direction I'm going to go now that the plans have sort of changed and give you some more insight about the future of Umber Society. So for those of you who haven't seen my last video, I basically posted a video about how my co-founder decided to drop out of the challenge. And obviously for a lot of reasons that changes the direction of things and directly affects the possibility of whether or not I'll really even be able to complete the challenge. But regardless of the fact, I'm not really discouraged. I'm always, I was a little disappointed, but she had some valid reasons. And at the end of the day, I know that I have something that I wanna be able to create and build. And the purpose of the challenge still is yet to be fulfilled. Despite everything that's happened thus far, the whole point of the challenge was never really to make money. The idea was to create a lofty goal and some, to give us something to work really hard towards while specifically leveraging the skills that we've gained in the tech industry with the purpose of educating and inspiring you to be able to really engage and open your perspective to the opportunities that may exist for you in the in the tech industry. Speaking specifically about software engineering, if you take the time to learn the skills to become a developer, a web developer, mobile developer, or your generic software developer, there's a lot of things that you open yourself up to opportunity-wise. You can literally build almost anything you want. And there's so many different platforms and methods and patterns that you can do. And even like places to begin with templates and communities you can join that allow you to be encouraged and inspired to create the things that you dream of. And initially that was the whole, like the crux of the, of the purpose behind the challenge was just to continue to inspire you to try and, and you know, engage in this community and in this industry. So at the time of recording this, it, today is Friday, November 19th. We started the challenge on September 22nd. And since we started on September 22nd, it's been roughly about 58 days, a little bit more than halfway through the 100 day challenge. So there's a few more weeks left before the end of the year, December 31st, which is the end of the challenge or the end of the day. And so far what we've done is we've created an LLC, a website, you know, all that great stuff. I've gone through it in some of my other videos, but what's left at this point is Umber Society. So the original plan with the 50K challenge was to obviously set a lofty goal, something that would be not easy to hit, but not impossible. And we did, and Nicole and I originally did believe that the 50K was definitely attainable. So the original idea was to create a suite of digital products that were geared towards entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and people who essentially wanted to start a digital business of some sort. In addition to website templates, we would create a bunch of other digital resources that could be essentially created once and sold multiple times. The way we saw it was there were a few things that every digital business needed, specifically the one being a website. We was going to use Showit and a bunch of other website builders to create a bunch of different templates that would cater towards these people while also providing all of the, the typical functions of a highly performant website, you know, components that were highly converting, really good layouts. And we also wanted to focus on making sure that we provided stock photography and images that reflected people of color because those were the, the target demographic we want to help and support. A lot of times when you go and look for website templates, you're not gonna see a lot of stuff that look like us or a lot of content that represents us. So oftentimes when you're searching for or shopping for a template, it's often hard to relate or maybe visualize how a template can be adjusted to fit your personality or your brand style. So we want to try and, you know, focus on creating templates that were that were a lot more relatable and applicable to, you know, businesses that were ran by people of color. So specifically with website templates, the the funnel was going to be we were going to create the website templates first, then we're going to utilize a strategy called permissionless building to try and get some free marketing. So what permissionless building is on a high level is the idea that you would take something that you have, maybe a product or, or something similar, and use it to create something of value for somebody else, often pro bono or for free. So you're doing it permissionlessly, which means like you're not asking them if they would you know, enjoy it or if they would like it. You're just building it for them and essentially gifting it to them. The idea behind that was if you made them look good, made them feel good, or made it easier for them to make money in some way or even directly made them money, the chances of them sharing it to their audience was pretty high. And essentially, if they had a large following, we would be able to leverage a lot of that extra traffic or a lot of that extra marketing to eventually funnel and convert into possible sales. Combining that with our existing audiences, I 150% believe we could have hit that 50K mark. A lot of templates, especially good ones, are selling in the range of 200 to over $1,000. And I know for a fact, the ones that we were in the process of creating would have outperformed 
a lot of the other templates at those price range. I mean, as somebody who's built websites for years, I look at some of these templates that are created and they do one thing really well and that's look pretty. But when building a website, you wanna make sure that it not only makes you look good, but it's also highly performant, it's mobile optimized, since most people on the web are browsing on their mobile phone these days, and that it has components or a layout or design that is very effective at converting your traffic into whatever you need, whether that's capturing emails, converting them into sales, or joining a newsletter, whatever the case may be, it needs to be really good at converting. A lot of the designs that I've seen that people are charging exorbitant amounts of money for look pretty, but they don't exactly have those elements that are highly converting. Like they may be missing call to actions or the overall user experience is not optimized for funneling that traffic in some way. So the idea being that we would be able to create these templates that were not only beautiful and well-designed, but also highly performant and highly functional. So that way they serve the purpose that they were meant to serve. So yeah, we was gonna create templates, or any other products, do some permissionless building, and then eventually leverage that extra traffic and our current following to convert into sales. We had a bunch of different plans laid out. We even started the design process. I finished one whole template design and then actually started implementing it on Show It, uh, one of the website builders I mentioned earlier, but I've now decided to change the direction. Now, before Nicole made that decision, she and I did have a conversation in which she brought up her concern about that product not fitting the market that is our current audience, especially when it came to making videos about that process. We wanted to make sure that you had a lot of value from what it was that we were doing. And a lot of you may not necessarily be in the place where you're looking to start a digital business or you know, may not even be our entrepreneurs, and that's totally okay. So we ended up discussing alternative directions that we could go that would cater more towards our existing audiences. And that's what led me thinking about creating more of a mentorship program or a pro group of sorts that specifically focused on connecting new or junior software engineers and developers to other more seasoned professionals in the industry. I feel like when I look, when I think about what's holding our community back from jumping into the tech industry right now, it, it's twofold. So the main barrier initially was, I don't know where to start. I have no access to the resources that people would typically use to become an engineer. Ergo, I can't afford college to become, you know, get my bachelor's or my master's in computer science or something along those lines. And I feel like that barrier now has all but been broken just because of the the overwhelming amount of information that's accessible to people now, whether that's, you know, you can go self-taught route with all the free information and resources that are out there. I mean, you got things like free code camp, you got boot camps that are releasing their uh, courses for free. You have open source research documentation and roadmaps that are available to you. Outside of that, you also can pay for digital courses that are far cheaper than a college education, you know, through Udemy or Coursera or any other course platform like that. And then you also have this meteoric rise in boot camps. Boot camps have become super popular over the last four or five years now and they have become very mainstream as a vehicle for people to get into the industry very quickly those who want to even make career changes are considering boot camps because they are slightly more affordable and more faster paced than the typical college experience so i feel like with all of these things now that first barrier has kind of almost diminished in a sense where people have so many more opportunities now than before to get into the industry or at least learn the skills necessary to join the industry. But what I find now is that, at least in my experience, that now that I've been in the industry for going on four years, I've noticed that the next barrier that a lot of our people end up encountering is a barrier in their growth or a stunting of their growth and development within their careers due to a lack of mentorship and coaching in the tech space. Everybody knows that the tech space right now is not very diverse. Obviously, you have people like me who are working to change that and that will continue to change as time goes on. But in addition to that, there is a severe lack of black and mentors of color who are actively taking on mentees and helping share their knowledge, their wealth of knowledge and expertise and wisdom on how to accelerate your career trajectory or your growth in that career pathway. So one of the things I was thinking about doing with Umber Society is creating a focus group of sorts that would serve two purposes. One, to connect more highly focused, highly driven, highly ambitious individuals with others that are like them, because that's something that I personally want and I've found it very difficult to do throughout my entire life. I I believe there's a lot of value in being able to surround yourself with people who are like-minded, who have similar drive, similar purpose, and similar vision to want to do something more with their life than what they are currently doing. 
And I think there's a lot of power in being able to be in a part of a community that is full of people like that, that are also engaged and engaging community. It's important that the community to me would be very engaging and very active. I don't want to create another free Slack workspace or Discord channel that, you know, has no activity or, you know, a lot of it's not productive in a sense. And then the, the second purpose that it would serve would be to bridge the gap between those aspiring or entry level developers and the mentors and coaches who are actively trying to pay it forward and help people accelerate their growth in the industry. So right now I'm in the process of really developing that idea. A lot of the branding that I created for Umber Society directly still aligns with that purpose because the whole point of Umber Society is, is to create a community that's focused on engaging black people and Latinx people and other people of color into the tech industry. But I'm, I'm modeling it a lot off of another YouTuber and designer and overall genius that I follow, Chris Doe. I fought, I've been following Chris Doe for a few years now on his channel, The Future and everything that they've been doing with helping creators turn their creative skills into a functioning, scalable business. Well, I'm thinking about modeling the group off of his pro group. If you don't know, he has a pro group that basically puts you in a cohort with other, again, highly driven, highly focused individuals or other creatives and he connects them with mentors, he does guided coaching sessions, um, and they have they bring in subject matter experts to just provide all his value. And everything's recorded, so when you get access, when you pay for access to the group, you also get access to this very large archive of previous information that was shared from previous cohorts. And I think that there's a lot of value in something like that. Originally, I wanted to do it for free, but one of the things that I've learned as somebody who has paid for courses myself or paid for mentorship and things of that nature is that, uh, or even as somebody who's worked to get to where I am, you take things a lot more seriously when you put some level of skin in the game. Now, at the same time, that my purpose in this is first and foremost to engage with my community and help accelerate their growth. So I'm not trying to make it super exclusive or super inaccessible. In my mind, it should be just as accessible to a person coming out of high school as it would be to somebody who's seasoned in their position or in their career. So I'm not trying to make some like course you got to pay, you know, thousands of dollars for or some group that you have to pay an annual fee of however, you know, $15,000 or $1,500 even like the idea is not to price out the <laughs> the community that I'm trying to help. But I do 150% believe that if you don't put any skin in the game or you don't put any value or take any risk in engaging with a high performing group or a mastermind of some sort, you're not gonna take it as seriously. And you're not gonna value it as much. I'm a direct believer in that just because I've, that's been me. You know, I've had access to free resources and I've noticed that while I'm somebody who does take a lot of that stuff seriously, because I feel like, oh, it's gonna be around, I have access to it, the sense of urgency isn't always there. Or it's easy to be there at first and it's easy to lose it as time goes on just because you know it's always gonna be there. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. But in my mind, two things have to happen. One, I have to be able to sustain it. I want to be able to bring in subject matter experts. I want to be able to bring in other mentors and coaches. And a lot of times, a lot of people ain't going to speak for free. And the cost of running any type of group at scale is not going to be cheap. So I have to be able to make sure I at least am able to make enough to support and sustain the, the group itself. But I want to make sure that I'm providing as much value as possible to the people who are participating because in no way do I want anybody who does uh, decide to participate to wonder if they're getting more than whatever the the price that they're paying in is, is in value. So with all that said, the high level idea right now is to create Umber Society as a highly driven, highly engaged community of go-getters and people who wanna make something of their lives within the tech industry and being able to connect them with mentors and coaches in that industry. So like I said earlier, I'm still developing out the high level plan of how I wanna do this. I'm reaching out to potential mentors and coaches to see who would wanna participate while also trying to get feedback from my immediate circle and my smaller community. But the reason why I'm making this video is because I want to get your feedback to see what do you think of that? Like, do you think this is something that you would be interested in? Is there something that you would be looking for specifically that would be really valuable to you? Because at the end of the day, I'm doing this for you and I wanna make sure that whatever I create, you benefit from as much as possible. That's the that's the primary goal here. So I'm looking, I'm openly looking for feedback. I'm in the process now where I have a type form that I will include in the description because I'm actually looking to bring on uh, like five to 10 people as a pilot group to kind of further define that process and also kind of test 
out the flow of things, the technology, the stack, and you know the model behind everything, and make some adjustments and iterations before I open it up to a larger cohort. So if you're interested, I will include all the information in the description. But all otherwise, please comment and let me know what you think because I really want to get your feedback. And again, I'm trying to build something specifically for you, my community, who was interested in getting into the industry. In this case, it's specifically for software engineering. So whether that's learning to code or learning how to improve your coding ability or trying to connect with people who will teach you how to advance in your career further along than just getting your first, second, or third job. With all that being said, that was my quick update. Thank you so much for watching. I have some more ideas in the pipeline. Feel free to leave comments below on anything that you really wanna see or really wanna know if I haven't touched on it already. And I will add that to my backlog because I'm really trying to get in the, the habit of making a lot more stuff for you to be able to benefit from. So um, with that being said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.